All right, good evening. My name is Hunter, and this is content review for general chemistry students at Portland State University. Um, thank you all. I realize I didn't get around to actually recording and submitting a video for last week. Uh, I beg your forgiveness for that. I had a family emergency I had to take care of and just didn't get around to it. So, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and look at equilibrium. So, a few important things that I want to highlight here. Um, in your textbook, on the in the Open Text textbook online, there is a section at the end of each chapter called Important Equations, and this section is a really handy place to have important equations available for review that you can just take a screen grab of and put in your notes. This was very helpful for me. One of the things that we're going to be working a lot with is this um, uh, uh, having an absolute brain fart, um, reaction quotients, right? Now at equilibrium, you're gonna see these variables written a lot. And so I kind of want to explain them a little bit more on the front end. Your reaction quotient at equilibrium is equal to K EQ. K is that reaction constant, that equilibrium constant. You may sometimes see this written as KC, and that is uh, concentration, or KP, and that's going to be gas pressure. We'll explain that a little bit more, uh, but the only thing that you need to remember with KP is that you know gas pressure is related to the number of moles that are present, and the species is not as important. So by measuring the pressure, the partial pressure of each gas, you can actually get a really direct measurement of how many moles of gas are present in a mixture. Uh, so speaking of mixtures, let's look at solubility rules and as they relate to equilibrium here. So among the solubility rules previously discussed, uh, I guess this would be last week, uh, is the statement all chlorides are soluble except mercury chloride, silver chloride, lead chloride, and copper chloride. Write the expression for the equilibrium constant for the reaction presented by the following equation. And again, this is equilibrium constant, so you can write this Kc or Keq. And we're given this balanced equation. Is Kc greater than one, less than one, or approximately one, and explain your answer. So as with the equation we were looking at above, your equilibrium constant is going to be a measure of your products over reactants. Now, we're dealing with silver chloride, which is not soluble, and this solid here is important. So if it's not soluble, we're not going to end up with any products here. Which means, or we're going to have very, very, very tiny amounts of ionized products. We can go ahead and write this equation. And since we're dealing with a solid, your reactant is always going to be one if your product is a solid. So that's kind of the important thing that you want to note there. If your reactant is a solid, or your product is a solid for that matter, the concentration is one. So this value is always going to be less than one because it's insoluble. your concentration of ions is going to be less than one mole per liter. All right, so now we're going with lead and chloride ions in aqueous solution moving towards lead chloride solids. Now, because they're insoluble, if we put these ions in solution together, they should 
precipitate out and we should get a solid. So we should have a lot more product compared to reactant at the end of this. So KEQ or KC is again, our product is a solid, so it's one over the concentration of lead and the concentration of chloride raised to this two exponents. So in these equilibrium constant, uh, calculations, your coefficient for each product, for, for each species needs to be an exponent. This is always going to be greater than one. Uh, that product is insoluble, meaning it'll precipitate out. So formation of product or of solid reduces the available concentration at low levels of ions, so less than one molar. So greater than one and less than one for A and B respectively. <clears throat> Benzene is one of the compounds used as octane enhancers in unleaded gasoline. It is manufactured by the catalytic conversion of acetylene to benzene. So acetylene to benzene. Which value for your equilibrium constant, Kc, would make this reaction most useful commercially. Kc of approximately 0.01, approximately one, or Kc of approximately 10 and explain your answer. In thinking about this, here are some rules to kind of help you help you answer this. If we have all reactants and no products, then your reaction quotient is going to be zero, so all or none. If you have all product, and no reactant, you'll have a reaction quotient of infinity. And if you have mostly reactant with little product, it's going to be a very, very, very small number. So for this commercial process, we want mostly product, right? But Again, it was products over reactants. Our concentration of benzene has a coefficient of one and our acetylene has this coefficient of three, so it's the third exponent. We're gonna need a pretty If we want to favor products, our reactant in this equation needs to be small. Our, our, our denominator needs to be pretty relatively small, or KC needs to be big. So, A KC of 10 would be advantageous for moving, pro moving the reaction towards the product side. Okay. okay. Write the math mathematical expression for the reaction quotient, QC, for each of the following reactions. We're not going to do all of these. 
because it gets to be a little repetitive, but we'll do this first one. Again, it is products over reactants. So our QC at any given concentration is CH3Cl times the concentration of HCl. There's no coefficient on those in our balanced equation, so we leave it alone, over the concentration of reactants. That looks like methane gas and dichloride. And that should be it, right? So that's A. Looking at B, it's a little bit different because we have NO with a coefficient in front of it, so we need to raise it to the second power over our reactant species. Those do not have coefficients. We don't need to change anything. We'll do one more because I think should be pretty clear so far, but here we have, I actually want to skip a few because they threw an old curveball in here for us, and that is we have a product which is a solid. So if we do E, Our concentration of um, P4O10 is always going to equal 1. And so our reaction will be the concentrations of our reactants. Oxygen has a coefficient of 5, so raised to the fifth power. And that is your reaction coefficient for that one. So you have to pay attention to all of the little bits in here. Um, you have other parts in here, like how liquid might affect that. You have another solid in here. So just be, be conscious and aware and make sure you understand how the different phases will affect the relative concentrations in these equations. So 17, we're going to do a little bit more of this so from a little bit different angle. The initial concentrations or pressures of reactants and products are given for each of the following systems. Calculate the reaction quotient and determine the direction in which each system will proceed to reach equilibrium. So we're not just interested in what the reaction coefficient is, we're interested in which way will it go based on that value with respect to its equilibrium coefficient. So Kc here is 17, so that's an important value to keep in mind. So for this first one, we have our balanced equation, 2NH3 in equilibrium with N2 plus three equivalents of hydrogen gas. So all gaseous, let's get our products going. that three exponent over concentration of NH3 squared. We're given one mole of nitrogen gas, one molar of hydrogen gas, and that's going to be cubed, but it's all going to end up being one over 0.2 molar squared gives us one in the numerator, gives us 0 0.04 in the denominator, gives us 25. So now we need to look, is this reaction quotient of 25 greater than, less than, or equal to 17, which is our equilibrium concentration quotient. 
25, of course, is greater than 17. Does that mean that it's going to push towards products or towards reactants? Because it's greater, it means we have rel relatively more product compared to reactant. And it's going to favor a movement towards the reactant side or towards the left. So I've written this two different ways here, but. So our reaction quotient of 25, which is greater than the equilibrium quotient, means that it's going to push towards that reactant side. Taking a look at the next one. Um, it's the same formula as here. We're dealing with the same species. So, but now we're given gas pressure. So our, I'll write it as QP. We've got two moles of nitrogen, or two atmosphere, excuse me, of nitrogen. One atmosphere of hydrogen. And three atmospheres of our reactant. Gives us two times one is two. Three squared is nine. So two divided by nine is point two two. And that is much less than 6.8. So in this case, products are favored. Reaction moves to the right. Question C gets a little funny. I'm going to make some assumptions here that you're starting to see the trends, products over reactants. Make sure that you use your um, molar equivalents as an exponent in your equation here for getting your reaction, your, uh, reaction quotients. And we're just going to. Sorry, my screen is acting a little bit funny, which is making this hard, hard to read. Um, for C, we have a concentration of SO3 of zero. It's a reactant, so it's going to be in the numerator of our fraction here, of our equation. And zero divided by anything is undefined. So what does it mean for it to be undefined? <laughs> Mathematically, if you understand the math well enough to look at that and know that it means it's going to push it towards the left, great. The way that I have to think about this is, oh, there's nothing on the reactant side. We only have products present. That means it's going to, the reaction, if one proceeds, is going to want to proceed towards the reactant side. And that again is because we have this molar concentration of zero for our react. Um, excuse me, anything divided by zero. Anything divided by zero is because it's products over reactants. Yeah, anything divided by zero is undefined. But you don't even have to know that math rule. You just have to think, okay, there's nothing on the reactant side. It's going to move the reaction will proceed towards that. That side. Um, so for D, we're given pressures again. And again, gas pressure, the partial pressure of each species can be used in place of its concentration because if we think back to our ideal gas law, pressure is directly proportional to the number of moles of a gas present. So 
So for D, using a little bit of a, a shortcut here again, um, all of our values are one, uh, which means that even if we raise them to whatever exponent based on their molar equivalents, um, the answer is still going to be one. You know, one divided by one is one. So our Kp equals one. And this reaction will proceed to the right towards products. E, we've got a similar thing going on, but I'm going to go ahead and write this one out. We've got concentrations over. We're given there it is. There's a weird break in the line here, but our concentration of product is zero. Zero divided by anything is zero. Doesn't matter. Equals zero. Since we don't have any products, reaction is going to proceed in that direction to the right. Cool. One more just for good measure. We're given pressures again, products over reactants. Our product is 10. There's two of them in our balanced equation. And we're given the nitrogen concentration is equal to the oxygen concentration equals five atmospheres. There's two of them. Make sure you include them both. 10 squared is 100, 5 squared is 25, 100 divided by 25 is 4. Now we need to look at our Kp. Four is indeed greater than 0 0.05. Reaction proceeds to the left towards the reactant side. Okay. Excuse me. Okay, the following reaction has a Kp of 4.5 times 10 to the negative fifth at 720 Kelvin. We're given our balanced equation. If a reaction vessel is filled with each gas to the partial pressures listed below, in which direction will it shift to reach equilibrium? And we're given some values. We're not dealing with a equilibrium yet. We're dealing with a reaction quotient. Product NH3 is 93. We got two of them. Reactants, we had nitrogen, partial pressure at 48. And of hydrogen at 52, and there's three of them. This one we can simply plug into our calculators. Be careful with your order of operations there. But we should get 0 0.00128, which is indeed greater than the equilibrium constant that we were given, or quotient that we were given. And so this reaction will proceed to the left towards the reactant side to achieve equilibrium. OK. 
convert the values of Kc, so concentration, to values of Kp, pressure, equilibrium co coefficients, or the values of Kp to the values of Kc. And I have already written the equation that you need to solve these here. Kp equals Kc times the quantity, R, some gas constant, times the temperature. This will be in Kelvin. Be careful of your units. All raised to the power of whatever the change in the number of moles is. What does that look like? Kp equals, we're given a Kc of 0.5 at 400 Celsius. Value for R is 0 0.08206 times, we're given 400 Celsius plus 273 gets us to Kelvin. That quantity, oop, need to show you how I got there. For delta N, the change in the number of moles. We take the number of moles of product minus the number of moles of reactants. This is simply in our balanced equation. We have two moles of product. We have three plus one, so four moles of reactants. Two minus four equals negative two. So we're gonna raise that RT value to negative two. So I would do that first. I would take R, which is 0 0.08206 times our temperature, and then raise that to the negative two, then multiply by 0.5, gives us 1.6 times 10 to the negative four. And that is how you go from Kc to Kp. To go the other direction, I'm not gonna do the rest of these, I'm just gonna show you the algebra. you're going the other direction, you're trying to find Kc, you simply divide both sides by RT delta N. Which gives you a new equation. And solve it algebraically. What is the value of the equilibrium constant at 500 degrees Celsius for the formation of NH3 according to the following equation? Nitrogen gas plus hydrogen gas in equilibrium with two NH3. We're given an equilibrium mixture of NH3, hydrogen, and nitrogen at 500 Celsius was found to contain 1.35 molar of hydrogen 1.15 molar of nitrogen and 4.12 times 10 to the negative one molar of NH3. Same thing we've been doing, just information presented a little bit different way. Products over reactants. This should look pretty familiar. We're also given at equilibrium. And we've got 4.12 times 10 to the negative 1. one. 1.15 and 1.35. Don't forget your exponents.
moving on. At 0 0.72, excuse me, a 0.72 mole sample of PCL5 is put into a one liter vessel and heated. Cool. So we have a starting concentration of PCL5 of 0 0.72 molar or moles per liter. Awesome. At equilibrium, the vessel contains 0.4 moles of PCL3 and 0.4 moles of chloride. Calculate the value of the equilibrium constant for the decomposition of PCL5 to PCL3 and Cl2 at this temperature. Same stuff. We're given a nice balanced equation, but let's go ahead and write it out. We're, we're not given a balanced equation, so that might be a good place to start, actually. PCL5 decomposes. This equation is balanced. We have no coefficients to worry about. Products over reactants. Gives us our reaction quotient. And we're told that this is at equilibrium. So this will, in fact, be our KEQ or K sub C. We are given concentrations of 0.4. For each of our products. Now, I threw this in there to kind of throw, throw people off. That 0.72 molar is not the concentration of our reactant in equilibrium. 0.72 molar is our concentration of product before it decomposes. So our actual value is it minus 0.4? Seven point, is it 0 0.72 minus 0 0.4, or is it 0 0.72 minus 2 times 0 0.4? Think about it for a second. One mole decomposes into one mole of each. We just need to subtract it one time because it's one, one equivalent of each. So your equilibrium constant for this reaction is 0 0.5. All right, complete the following partial ice tables. Ice, remember, stands for the initial concentration, the change in concentration, and finally, This is why it's a partial ice table, because it's not actually on there. But equilibrium. Is what your ice table would look like. So this is a partial one. Oh, geez. Okay. So we're given the initial, and we're given a change. The change was plus x. So we're adding whatever coefficient of oxygen. This is going to have an equal and opposite response to the opposite side of our balanced equation and a proportional change to the same side. 
So we have a coefficient of two here, so plus two x. We have two on our reactant side, negative two x. That's pretty much it. So for our next one, we have our initial, which is our balanced equation. We have our change. We're given plus x on three equivalents of O2. This is the same as writing 3 over 3 equals x. So I'm, I'm writing that because it makes this make a little bit more sense. So 4 thirds x on the same side of the equation. Here we have a coefficient of 2, so minus 2 thirds x and minus 6 thirds x equals minus 2x. Same deal. Minus 2x plus 3x. just looking at the coefficients. And that's everything I've got for you. Um, this is week nine, so this is probably the last time that I will see you. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, it has been a pleasure. I hope this has been helpful for you. Good luck on your finals. And I will see you next term.